morning. Good morning again. Today we have both Chair Craven and Commissioner Momoli present for today's meeting. Chair Craven would like uh, Commissioner Momoli to open and lead today's meeting. I will lead this over to uh, Commissioner Momoli. Good morning. Welcome to the Public Facilities Commission. Before us today is the Mayor's Office of Housing. Thank you, Commissioner Mamoli. This meeting is being recorded and broadcast live. Uh, Colleen Daly, the PFC Secretary, will take roll call to get us started today of the meeting participants. Colleen, if you would please conduct the roll call. Thank you, TT. Participants, please unmute your device and confirm your presence when I call your name. Beginning roll call with the Commission. Catherine Craven, Chair. Present. Larry Mamoli, Commissioner. Present. TT Lee, Legal Advisor. Present. Catherine Pendleton, Article Clerk. Present. Next with the Mayor's Office of Housing, Sheila Dillon, Chief and Director. Present. Narelise Janus, Project Ma Manager, Real Estate Management and Sales. Present. Tiara Satchaville, Housing Development Officer, Neighborhood Housing Development Division. Present. Stephanie Silva, Housing Development Officer, NHD. Present. Teresa Strachilla, Program Manager, Gro Gro Boston. Present. John Fearback, Senior Development Officer, NHD. And I'll read for the remainder of the the remainder of the individuals who are in attendance but will not be presenting. Elizabeth Feltner, Paralegal, James McDonough, Senior Staff Attorney, Rosemary Chung Dell, Assistant Director for REMS, Jessica Boatwright, Deputy Director NHD. Shani Fletcher, Assistant Director, Director's Office Division. Antonio Letes, Senior Development Officer, NHD. James Smith, Senior Environmental Compliance Manager, for REMS. Joe Backer, Senior Development Officer for NHD. And I think I've got everyone. Uh, this concludes roll call. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen. Beginning this morning, we have Sheila Dillon, Chief and Director of the Mayor's Office of Housing. MOH has eight votes on the agenda for today. Vote number one is being presented by Narelise Jenis, Project Manager with the Real Estate Management and Sales Division of MOH. This is a request for conveyance to Ronald Peters and Siobhan Peters for vacant land located at 23 Dakota Street in Dorchester. The purchase price is recommended at $32,000. Narelise, if you would please present vote number one. Thank you, TT. Good morning, commissioners. Um, I am here requesting PFC approval for conveyance to Ronald and Siobhan Peters for the parcel identified in the vote package in the Dorchester neighborhood of Boston. Uh, MOH conducted a public service that resulted in the developer designation in this following conveyance vote request. Uh, to refresh the commissioner's memories, um, a community notification was mailed in January and July of 2022 to inform of MOH's intent to issue an RFP for the parcel. A request for proposal was issued on July 11th, 2022 and advertised in the State Central Register on July 13th of 2022, uh, the Boston Herald, Herald on July 11th and the 18th of 2022, as well as the city record July 18th and the 25th of 2022. Uh, PFC approved tentative de developer designation of Rick Ronald and Siobhan Peters on November 16 of 2022. Uh, the designation was advertised in the city record on January 23rd and the 30th of uh, 2023. The vote package includes a comprehensive memo about the project and the PFC vote request. I have also provided a handout to this vote request, which is displayed on the screen, um, and it illustrates uh, a site map um, showing the location of the parcel um, as well as a street view of the parcel itself. Um, the parcel will be sold with an open space deed restriction. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Peters own the adjacent parcel and propose to use this parcel as additional yard space and or parking. In summary, if PFC approves the vote request, that will result in the following public benefits. It would return a vacant parcel that's been in uh, MOH's inventory for a little over 34 years back to productive use and tax rolls. Um, and this sale will, will generate um, $32,000 in initial revenues from the sale. And I am here to answer any questions you may have. Unless there's any questions, motion to approve. Seconded. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Vote number one is hereby approved. <clears throat> Vote number two is also being presented by Narrowlist Genis. This is a request for tentative developer designation and intent to sell to Edwina J. Wynn for vacant land located at unnumbered parcel on Gladside Avenue in Mattapan. The purchase price is recommended at $94,500. Mayor Lisa, if you please present vote number two. Thanks, TT. Um, I am here for PFC approval for the tentative developer designation to Edwina J. Wynn for the parcel identified in the vote package in the Mattapan neighborhood of Boston. Um, MOH conducted a public process that resulted in the developer designation in this tentative designation vote request. A community notification was mailed in December of 2020, February of 2021, and July of 2022 to inform of MOH's intent to issue an RFP for this parcel. A request for a proposal was issued on July 11th and advertised in the State Central Register on July 13th of 2022 the Boston Herald on July 11th and the 18th of 2022, as well as the city record on July 18th and the 25th of 2022. One proposal was received to this RFP on August 15th, 2022. It was determined to meet the eligibility criteria. Uh, the offer price is for the appraised value. Uh, the vote package includes a comprehensive memo about the project and PFC vote request, but also provided handouts. Um, which display the site map and a aerial view of, of the um, image. It's, it's landlocked, so it's hard to get a good picture of it. So um, uh, I have, uh, in summary, uh, well, Mrs. Wynn is a direct abutter to this parcel and she would utilize the space as just additional open space in yard to her own um, yard. Uh, in summary, if PFC approves this vote request, it will result in the public following benefits. It will return a vacant property in MOH's inventory for over 49 years back to productive use and tax rolls. And the sale will also generate 94,500 in initial revenues from the sale. And I am here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Unless there's any questions, motion to approve. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Vote number two is hereby approved. Vote number three is being presented by Tierra Sachiba, Housing Development Officer for the Neighborhood Housing Development Division of MOH. This is a request for an amendment to the vote of April 15, 2022 to extend the tentative designation intent to sell period from 60 to 72 months to Harvard Street Neighborhood Health Center Incorporated. This is for land with building thereon located 8 Old Road and 14 Ellington Street in Dorchester. Tierra, if you please present vote number three, please. Good morning, commissioners. I'm here requesting PFC approval for a 12 month extension of the tentative developer designation to the nominee Harvard Street Neighborhood Health Center for two parcels of vacant land located at 14 Ellington Street and 8 Old Road in the Dorchester neighborhood and as outlined in the vote package. PFC voted to approve the 12 month tentative developer designation of Harvard Street Neighborhood Health Center on March 14, 2018 and furthermore approved three extensions of the vote, including on March 13, 2019 for 12 months, March 11th, 2020 for 24 months, and April 15th, 2022 for 12 months. As background, MOH conducted a public process regarding the disposition of the parcels, including a community notification letter that was mailed by MOH to relevant elected officials and property owners in a 300 foot radius of the subject prior to community meetings hosted by MOH. Based on community meeting input, a request for proposals was issued on July 18th, 2016, per Commonwealth Chapter uh, Chapter 30B requirements and advertisements. Two proposals were received. Each developer presented their plan at an MOH-sponsored community meeting. Based on community feedback and MOH review of all eligible applications against the RFP evaluation criteria, MOH recommended and POC approved the tentative developer designation of Harvard Street Neighborhood Health Center at the March 14, 2018 PFC meeting. PFC approval was based on the proposed plan to create a neighborhood health center on the two parcels. The vote package includes a comprehensive memo about the project and the PFC vote request. I have provided slides related to this vote request, which are displayed on the screen. The first provides a locus map of the two parcels. The second slide 
shows the existing conditions of each parcel. And the final slide displays a proposed rendering of the new health center that is in the schematic stage and is being reviewed by MLH and BPDA design staff. To date, Harbor Street Neighborhood Health Center has accomplished the following. Harbor Street Neighborhood Health Center is a full development team, including a key development partner, the Community Builders, who has acted as a development consultant to advance development, design, and financing tasks associated with the development plan. The team has conducted meetings with various stakeholders in the community, as well as elected officials. Harbor Street Neighborhood Health Center and TCB continue to meet with the community to provide updates on the project and to gain input to help in the design and programming of the development plan. Harbor Street Neighborhood Health Center and TCB have engaged with the BPDA and MOH in the Article 80 process, submitted their design and development plan for the site and have responded to BPDA and MOH comments that have led to an improved design and site plan for the new health center on the site. And in December 2022, Harbor Street Neighborhood Health Center was awarded $8 million of state opera funds to design and construct a new health center on the site. MOH is requesting a 12-month extension of the developer designation to allow additional time for Harbor Street Neighborhood Health Center to achieve the following task. Continue meeting with MOH and BPDA's design teams on de to develop uh, and design, sorry, on the development and design of the site. Uh, submit for BPDA Article 80 approval once the design is complete, acquire necessary public agency approvals and permits for construction, and finalize construction financing to enable a project closing. In closing, if POC approves the vote request, the project will create the following public benefits. The creation of a new state-of-the-art, standalone ADA-compliant health center to serve uh, the neighborhood of Dorchester and the Boston community. Uh, the removal of city-owned parcels that have been in city inventory for over 15 years and will, and will be used for public use. We expect to return to PFC in 2024 for a conveyance vote. Thank you, and I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Uh, unless there's any questions, motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Vote number three is hereby approved. Vote number four. Aye. Thank you. Uh, vote number four is being presented by Tierra Satchbell as well. This is a request for tentative developer designation and intent to sell to a nominee comprised of principals of Volney Capital LLC. This is for vacant land located at 251 to 255. 259 and an unnumbered parcel on Washington Street in Dorchester. The purchase price is recommended at $250,000. Tierra, if you please pre present vote number four. Good morning, Commissioners. I am here requesting POC approval for the tentative developer designation of Volney Capital for the parcels identified in the vote package located uh, in, Dor in the Dorchester neighborhood of Boston. Volney proposes the new construction of 47 rental units including 10 affordable units, ground floor, commercial space, and a $250,000 acquisition payment to the city for the RFP. As background, these parcels were included in the 251 to 255 Washington Street, 259 Washington Street, and a numbered parcel on Washington Street request for proposals, which was publicly advertised pursuant to Chapter 30B requirements including advertisements in the State Central Register on May 4th, 2022, the Boston Herald on May 2nd and May 9th, 2022, and the City Record on May 9th, 2022. The RFP was issued on May 2nd, 2022. Prior to advertising, MOH held a community meeting on November 5th, 2020, and July 26, 2020, uh, sorry, 2022 to review the parcels and development and design criteria for the RFP. After the meeting, MOH continued engagement with the community and a, a review of the draft RFP with neighborhood support. The RFP was issued and the due date was June 13th, 2022. Volney Capital was the only respondent to the RFP and scored well across RFP evaluation categories. Volney Capital has experience in rental, condominium, single family home development, and rental renovations in the greater Boston area. 
Bonnet Capital uh, has completed numerous projects that demonstrate Bonnet's track record of securing development financing and completing comparable products projects to the one that has been proposed in the application. Furthermore, Bonnet Capital owns three private par parcels that abut the city parcels and will include them in the development, thus maximizing the city's interests. Bonnet Capital won't utilize MOH funding for this project. Additionally, Bonnet Capital. Um, sorry, will acquire the properties for $250,000 as outlined in the RFP. Bonnet Capital has provided a development budget that includes all development costs, including acquisition, direct construction, soft costs, fees, and overhead. Bonnet Capital has also stated that they have a commitment to hiring MWBE local subcontractors throughout the lifetime of the project. The vote package includes a comprehensive memo about the project and the PFC vote request. I've provided some slides related to this vote request. Uh, the first slide uh, displayed on the screen is a locus map of the parcels. The second slide shows the existing conditions of the sites. And the third slide shows the proposed renderings of the development. Volney Capital has proposed development of a four-story building, which includes 47 rental units and ground floor commercial space that will be marketed for neighborhood uses, such as a restaurant. The development will have 27 off street parking spaces that will be used for residential and commercial needs. And the develop, development provides 10 uh, units at or below 30% AMI and 10 units at or below 50% AMI. In summary, if PFC approves the vote request, Volney Capital will complete various tasks such as advance the design plans with MOH and BPDA, submit for BPDA Article 80 approval once the design is complete acquire necessary public agency approvals and permits for construction, and finalize construction financing to enable a project closing. We expect to return to PFC in fall 2023 for a conveyance vote. In closing, if the PFC approves the vote request, the project will create the following community benefits. Uh, creation of 47 new housing units, of which 10 are at or below 30% uh, AMI, it will revitalize six parcels um, of underutilized vacant land in the neighborhood, including three parcels that are city owned and another three that are privately owned, creation of affordable ground floor commercial space, and it will revitalize land that has been in the city inventory for over 30 years for the creation of housing. Thank you, and I am here to answer any questions you may have. Uh, no questions at this point. Motion to approve. Seconded. All in favor. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Vote number four is hereby approved. Vote number five is being presented by Stephanie Silva, Housing Development Officer with the Neighborhood Housing Development Division of MOH. This is a request for a tentative developer designation and intent to sell to the Lewis D. Brown Peace Institute Corporation for vacant land located at 30 Westville Street, an unnumbered parcel on Westville Street, Dorchester. The purchase price is recommended at $29,000. Stephanie, if you please present vote number five. Thank you, TT, and good morning, commissioners. I'm here requesting PFC approval for the tentative developer designation of the Lewis D. Brown Peace Institute for the parcels identified in the vote package and which are located in the Dorchester neighborhood of Boston. As background, these parcels were included in the 30 Westville Street and Westville Street unnumbered request for proposals, which was publicly advertised pursuant to Chapter 30B requirements, including advertisements in the State Central Register on August 31st, 2022, in the Boston Herald on August 29th and September 5th, 2022, and in the City Record on September 5th and September 12th, 2022. The RFP was issued on August 29th, 2022. Prior to advertising, MOH held community meetings on June 5th and June 22nd, 2021, to discuss the development and design criteria for the RFP. These MOH-sponsored meetings followed an independent community-led process in which residents identified a preference for spaces for community-based health and healing. Residents preferred use for the parcels required a zoning change, so MOH and BPDA staff hosted a meeting on September 21st, 2021, to explain the zoning change process. After receiving resident support and completing a zoning change in December 2021, MOH issued the RFP in August 2022. MOH received one response that met the RFP eligibility criteria, and MOH staff posed clarifying questions to representatives of the team as part of our review process. 
In his proposal, the Lewis D. Brown Peace Institute proposes building a center of healing, teaching, and learning to serve as their organization's new home as well as a community space. The Lewis D. Brown Peace Institute, referred to from here as the Peace Institute, is a nonprofit dedicated to promoting peace and to providing healing and su support to those impacted by violence. The Peace Institute has been based in the Four Corners neighborhood for 30 years while serving local survivors and families, as well as many across the state and nationally. The Peace Institute has assembled a team of expert prior development experience in comparable Boston area construction projects. Their development consultant, Bracken Development, is led by David Bracken, who has worked in housing and mixed-use development around Boston for 20 years. The Peace Institute's proposal includes a significant amount of funds to be raised over the next 14 months. The team has offered clear and reasonable steps to reach their goal, including a substantial fundraising team with a history of successful capital campaigns for the Peace Institute as well as other large nonprofits. In addition, the Peace Institute brings a high level of WMBE participation to its team, with six of nine identified consultants being WBE, MBE, or WMBE. Additionally, the Peace Institute is a woman, minority, and immigrant-led nonprofit and has tasked its team with hiring as many people as possible from the Dorchester neighborhood. On January 31st, 2023, MOH hosted a, meeting, a community meeting followed by a 10-day public comment period to introduce the Peace Institute team and their proposal. Community members that participated in the meeting and through the comment forum were extraordinarily supportive of the developer and for their plans for the site. The vote package includes a comprehensive memo about the project and the PFC vote request. I have also provided handouts related to this vote request, which are displayed on the screen. The first shows a locus map of the two adjacent sites. The second uh, shows a bird's eye view of the proposed development and site design. The third highlights the landscape uh, design that includes a meditation and healing garden on the unnumbered parcel and a combination parking area and event space with access from Westville Street. Uh, the fourth shows the view of the building from the sidewalk along Westville Street with the adjacent residential building for context. And the final slide shows the proposed meditation and healing garden. The project will result in one three-story building of approximately 15,000 square feet or 20,000 square feet, including below grade program space. This building will provide space for use by the community as well as clients and staff of the Lewis D. Brown Peace Institute. Some of the spaces proposed as a part of the building include a peace teaching and learning space, an auditorium, a kitchen, yoga studio, library and office space, as well as counseling, breakout therapy and meditation rooms. Services provided in the space will include survivors outreach services, community reentry services, healing support services, and training for providers serving families and communities. If PFC approves the vote request, the Lewis D. Brown Peace Institute will complete various tasks that include finalizing ZBA approval, general contractor cost and budget, fundraising $15 million for the express purpose of building and operating the new center, applying for permit approvals from the Boston Water and Sewer Commission, Public Works Department, and Inspectional Services. We expect to return to PFC in mid-2024 for a conveyance vote. In closing, if the PFC approves the vote request, the project will create the following community benefits. The creation of a center of healing, teaching, and learning led by a nationally recognized nonprofit, the revitalization of two parcels of underutilized vacant land in the neighborhood and removal of these parcels from the city's inventory, the construction of peace-focused community spaces, including a communal kitchen, community gathering spaces, a library, a computer lab, a co-working space, and others. The construction of outdoor spaces, including a multi-purpose event plaza and a meditation and healing garden. The creation of 50,276 construction hours, which will generate jobs in the building trades. Thank you, and I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Unless there's any other questions, motion to approve. Seconded. Verb. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Vote number five is hereby approved. Vote number six is being presented by Teresa Stratilla, Pro Program Manager with the Grow Boston Division of MOH. This is a request for a tentative developer designation and intent to sell to Garrison Trotter Neighborhood Association Incorporated for vacant land located at 8 Townsend Street in Roxbury. 
The purchase price is recommended at $100. Teresa, if you please present vote number six. Thank you, TT. Good morning, commissioners. I'm here requesting PFC approval of the tentative developer designation of Garrison Trotter Neighborhood Association, hereafter referred to as GTNA, for the parcel identified in the vote package in the Roxbury section of Boston. MOH conducted a public process that resulted in this vote request. MOH held a community meeting in September 2021 to discuss with community members the development of this parcel into an open space for community gatherings and education. Support by the community and neighbors was strong. A request for proposals was issued on August 29, 2022 and advertised in the State Central Register and the Boston Herald. One development team applied to the RFP and was determined to meet the eligibility criteria. Based on community feedback and MOH review of the application against the RFP evaluation criteria, we recommend the designation of GTNA. GTNA is a strong neighborhood association that has contributed to neighborhood events and cleanups near the parcel. Acquisition of this parcel will enable GTNA to develop the vacant lot into a gathering space for educational and other community activities. The vote package includes a comprehensive memo about the project and PFC vote request. I've also provided four handouts related to this vote request, which are displayed on the screen. The first is an aerial map of the parcel. The second is a satellite view of the parcel. The third is a street view of the parcel from Townsend Street. And the fourth is the preliminary design of the open space, including a central gathering space with seating, raised garden beds, a performance stage, and edible and decorative plantings including both shade and fruit trees. In summary, if PFC approves this vote request, it will result in the following public benefits. The proposed development will permanently preserve the open space for community gathering and education. In addition, the city will avoid approximately $6,500 a year in annual maintenance costs and return the property to productive use after over 35 years in our inventory. I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. I'm sorry, Larry, Larry we can't hear you. Sorry. Uh, sounds like a great project uh, motion to approve. For a second, I think we might have lost you. Pretty good. Catherine? That's me, sorry. Uh, no, that's fine, thank you. Uh, I'll just repeat myself, we had a motion to approve. Thank you, seconded. All in favor, aye. Aye. Thank you, vote number six is hereby approved. Vote number seven is also being presented by Teresa Stratilla. This is a request for amendment to the tentative developer designation vote of March 16, 2022 to extend the tentative designation intent to sell period from 12 to 18 months to Edward L. Cooper Community Gardening and Education Center Incorporated. 
This is for vacant land located at an unnumbered parcel on Linwood Street, 4143 and 45 Linwood Street, and 66 Center Street in Roxbury. Teresa, if you please present vote number seven. Thank you, Titi. I'm here requesting PFC approval of the extension of the tentative developer designation of the Edward L. Cooper Community Gardening and Education Center, hereafter known as ELCC, for the parcels identified in the vote package in the Roxbury section of Boston. As background, prior to the developer designation in March 2022, MOH conducted an extensive public process. MOH held a community meeting in May 2021 to discuss with community members the preservation of these parcels as open space, including the continued use of 66th Center Street as a community garden. Support by the community and the butters was strong. A request for proposals was issued on September 20th, 2021 and advertised in the state's State Central Register, the Boston Herald, and the City Record. One development team applied to the RFP and was determined to meet the eligibility criteria. PFC approved the tentative developer designation of ELCC on March 16th, 2022. Since their initial designation vote, ELCC has continued to engage with community members to finalize the site design. The site design includes the installation of a municipal water connection to support the community garden. ELCC initially had trouble identifying a contractor for the water connection which delayed their application for water permits to the Boston Water and Sewer Commission. With MOH's support, ELCC connected with a contractor last fall who is now actively working on the water permit application. They expect to submit plans to Boston Water and Sewer by the end of this week. In addition, as they have been finalizing their design and budget, ELCC has realized they may require additional fundraising to complete the entire design. They are awaiting quotes for landscaping work to determine if they will require additional funding to complete the full design. If so, ELCC will create a phased design that will include substantial improvements, which can be completed with existing funding as phase one. They already have a strong fundraising plan, if needed, to ensure implementation of the full design by the end of 2024. MOH is requesting a six month extension of ELCC's tentative developer designation to allow the development team additional time to secure the water permit and finalize their budget so that we might return to PFC for a conveyance vote by September 2023. This will make possible the development of an important community resource. The vote package includes a comprehensive memo about the project and PFC vote request. I've also provided four handouts related to this vote request, which are displayed on the screen. The first is an aerial map of the parcels the second is a satellite view of the parcels. The third is a street view of the site from Center Street. And the fourth shows the preliminary design for the site, which includes community garden beds, a pathway through an urban forest, and an open lawn for community gathering. In summary, if PFC approves the vote request to extend the developer designation by six months, that will lead to the following public benefits. It will preserve a long vacant property as a community garden, urban woods, and open space for the neighborhood. In addition, the city will avoid approximately $2,036 a year in annual maintenance costs and return this property to productive use after more than 17 and 29 years in our inventory. I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Sounds like a great project. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Vote number seven is hereby approved. <clears throat> the final vote on uh, MOH's, MOH's agenda <clears throat> for today is vote number eight. This is being presented by John Furback, Senior Development Officer with the Neighborhood Housing Development uh, Division of MOH. This is a request for an amendment to the tentative developer designation vote of March 16, 2022 to extend the tentative designation and intent to sell period from 12 to 18 months to Norfolk Design and Construction LLC 
and name change to Norfolk Scattered Sites LLC for vacant land located at 2729 Browning Avenue, 29 Bradley Street, 3038 Clarkson Street in Dorchester and Roxbury. John, if you please present vote number eight, please. Great, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Excellent, great. Um, thanks, TT. Uh, good morning, commissioners. Um, I'm here requesting PFC approval of a six month extension of the developer designation of Norfolk Scattered Sites LLC uh, for the Scattered Sites Standalone Neighborhood Homes Initiative development, uh, which includes the four vacant land parcels that uh, TT outlined in the agenda. Uh, the Norfolk team proposes seven new affordable units, including four sales and three, uh, three, three rental units. Um, on March 16, 2022, PFC approved the tentative developer designation and intent to sell to Norfolk Design and Construction LLC. Uh, they in turn created Norfolk Scattered Sites LLC, a single purpose entity created for the development. Um, as a little more background, MOH conducted a public process regarding the disposition of the, par of the parcels, including uh, MOH staff met with uh, community residents to announce the inclusion of the above parcels in the NH NHI program and uh, to discuss the development and uh, design criteria for the RFP. Uh, based on community meeting input, a request for proposals was issued on March 9th, 2020, with advertisements appearing in the Boston Herald, uh, the State Central Register, and, and the City Record, all following Chapter 30B requirements. Uh, the due date for the RFP was May 22nd, 2020, and at that time, six proposals were received. And then, as noted earlier, at the March 16th, 2022 PFC meeting, MOH recommended and PFC approved the tentative developer designation and intent to sell to Norfolk Design and Construction LLC. Uh, the vote package com uh, includes a comprehensive memo about the project and the PFC vote request. I've also provided slides related to this vote request, which are displayed on the screen. Uh, the, the first is uh, locus maps of the three, three sites. The second is site maps showing the existing conditions and street views of the sites. And then the third is just a selection of the building types that have been designed specifically for each of each of the sites. Thank you, Catherine. So the development plan includes seven affordable new homes, including four ownership units and three rental units. As I mentioned, it's under the Neighborhood Homes Initiative. Uh, it'll consist of three two-family structures. And this is the building type where you have an ownership and a rental unit, and then an additional single single family home that will be for ownership. Um, homes will all be affordable and they'll be split between 80% AMI, which we consider the moderate income, and 100% AMI, which is the middle. And the, the mix of affordability will include two sales at 80% AMI. Both of the sales will be the two families. So it will be a sale and, and, a, and, a, and a rental unit that will be that same 80% AMI. And then there will be two sales at 100% AMI, including um, one single family home and then a two family home. And again, that two family home will have an owner and a renter, and it will be pegged to the 100% AMI. Um, Norfolk has accomplished a good number of tasks since the designation. If received BPDA and ZBA uh, BPA approvals, they've got their stamp signed engineer drawings approved by Water and Sewer Commission, uh, Department of Public Works, uh, the permit sign off is approved. Um, permits are ready um, at ISD. Final design plans have been priced out and a commitment budget is being finalized. And then lastly, Norfolk has received a term sheet 
for commit uh, a commitment for financing from local initiatives support corporation LISC. Um, if PFC approves the extension vote request, Norfolk Scattered Sites LLC will accomplish the, the following tasks. They'll, they'll finalize the development budget, finalize uh, funding commitments, and then we expect to return to PFC this fall for a, a conveyance vote. Um, thank you, commissioners, and I'm here to answer any, any questions you have. Uh, no questions. Motion to approve. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Vote number eight is hereby approved. This concludes the agenda for MOH for today's meeting. Is there a motion to adjourn this meeting? Motion to adjourn. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, Tyler. Thank you. Thank you.